right, for these problems, we're going to first of all determine which case we have, and then solve the, con the triangle completely, so for everything that's missing, by either using law of sines or law of cosines. This first triangle here, I know angle C, and then I know the side between it, and I know angle B. So this is going to be angle, side, angle. So that means I am going to be using law of sines. So first of all, I could fairly easily solve for this missing angle right here. So I'm just going to take 180 minus 101 minus 63 to get my third angle. So I get angle A to be 16 degrees. Next, I'm either going to solve for side B or side C. Just remember for a minute here that the sides are across from their angles. So over here where I have side being 9, that's actually side little a. So let's solve for side B next. So I'm going to put my unknown at the top of my law of sines. So side B over sine of angle B equals, and then I know both parts of A. So I'm going to do side A, which is 9, over sine of angle A, which is 16. In order to solve this for B, I'm just going to have to multiply sine of 101 over to the other side. And we get 32.1. All right, and then to find C, we're going to do the same idea. So we're going to start by setting up our law of sines with side C on the top, because that's our unknown. We'll be over sine of angle C, which is 63 degrees equals side A, which is 9, over sine of angle A, which is 16. Again, I'm just going to need to multiply over the sine of 63 in order to solve for C. And we get 29.1. For problem 21, we have the case of side, side, side. So we're going to have to use law of cosines. I have all three sides here, and I'm going to solve for my angles. Um, let's just start with solving for angle A. So if we're solving for angle A, here's the equation that we're going to want to use. Now, I can go ahead and plug in side B, side C, and side A so that I can solve for angle A. In order to solve for angle A, I'm going to first need to subtract these terms over, and then I'm going to divide by this negative 2 times 14 times 9, just to get cosine of A alone. If I put in my calculator 6 squared minus 14 squared minus 9 squared, I get negative 241. Now, I'm going to divide over this negative 2 times 14 times 9. And I get 0 0.95634, so on and so forth. I'm just going to leave that in my calculator. And in order to get A alone, in order to solve for A, I'm going to do cosine inverse of this long decimal. So in my calculator, I'm just going to do the cosine inverse and then the answer button, which will plug in that long decimal. That gives me 16.99, so I'm going to say that angle A is equal to 17 degrees. Now I'm going to solve for angle B. Whenever I solve for angle B, I'm going to use this equation right here because it has angle B in it, big B. So next I'm going to plug in my sides, B, A, and C. Just like last time, I'm going to subtract over 6 squared and 9 squared, and then I'm going to divide by the negative 2 times 6 times 9.
and I get 79. And now we're going to divide. And we get negative 0 0.73148 and so on and so forth. Again, just leave that in your calculator. And we're going to do cosine inverse of the answer in our calculator to get our answer for angle B. And I get 137 degrees. Angle C should be easy to find because we're just going to do 180 minus 137 minus 17. So we get 26 degrees. Number 22 is a side side angle situation. So we're going to be using our law of sines. I'm going to start by finding angle C. And I'm going to use angle A and side A because I know both of them. I've started with sine of C on the top because that's my unknown. In order to solve this, all I'm going to have to do is multiply over this 9. And then I'm going to have to take sine inverse of whatever I get from the right side. Since I'm solving for an angle. Once I have my decimal, I can do sine inverse of the answer in my calculator. And I'm going to get angle C is equal to... 24.0 degrees once I round to the nearest decimal place. Angle B is really easy to find because I can just do 180 minus 84 minus 24 and that's going to give me 72. The last thing I need to solve for is side B. So I've set my equation up here with side B on the top because it's my unknown over sine of angle B. And then I've used side A over sine of angle A on the right side. I'm going to multiply over this sine of 72. And I get 21.0 once I round to the nearest tenth. Problem 23 is a side angle side situation, so I'm going to be using law of cosines. Let's start by finding side A. Okay, in order to solve for angle A, I've picked the, or I'm sorry, not angle A, side A. I've picked the equation that starts with side A squared. I've gone ahead and I've plugged in my sides for B and C and angle A. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this whole side in my calculator. And then whatever I get, I'm going to have to end up square rooting that answer because I have a squared. Once I do that, I get 49 after I've rounded to the nearest decimal place. Next, I'm going to solve for angle B. I picked the equation that has a capital B in it, since that helps us solve for angle B. I've plugged in all three of my sides. The first thing I'm going to do is subtract over 49 squared and 30 squared. And I get negative 2,725 on the right side. And now I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2 times 49 times 30. After I get that in my calculator, I'm going to leave that decimal in there. I'm going to do cosine inverse of the answer. And I get angle B equals... 22.1 degrees.
angle C should be pretty easy to find. It's just going to be 180 minus 130 minus 22.1, and we get 27.9 degrees.